How much do you actually know about our solar system? Would you be able to list all eight planets orbiting our sun off the top of your head? With today's video, we would like to travel with you to the remotest corner of our planetary system. To be more precise, we are going to Neptune. This gigantic celestial body has made headlines in the world of astronomy time and again as fascinating phenomena regularly occurs both inside and on the surface of the planet that simply cannot be explained by experts. Together with you, we are on the trail of these mysterious events. Have fun with this interesting topic. If you like our videos, please support us with a thumbs up, subscribe to Simply Space, and look forward to the videos that will be waiting for you in the future. Let's begin our journey through the vastness of the universe. At the outermost edge of our solar system is the planet Neptune. This gigantic celestial body, which has about 58 times the volume of our Earth, was first discovered in 1846. At that time, the astronomer Johann Gottfried Gale succeeded in immortalizing Neptune, which is about 4.5 billion kilometers away from us on the star charts. The diameter of the planet is about 50,000 kilometers. This value corresponds to about four times the diameter of the Earth, and thus makes Neptune the fourth largest planet in our solar system. In the world of astronomy, Neptune is assigned to the so-called ice giants. This term is used to describe those celestial bodies whose mass is essentially composed of volatile, chemical compounds. According to this distinction, Neptune consists mainly of hydrogen, helium, and methane, and therefore differs greatly in its composition from our blue home planet. The name of this giant planet, however, is borrowed from Roman mythology. In the imagination of the ancient Romans, Neptune was the water god who ruled all the oceans of the world and the other bodies of water on Earth. Another characteristic of Neptune is that the ice giant is the only celestial body in our solar system that we cannot see with the naked eye from Earth. This is only possible with the help of special astronomical telescopes. The chances of seeing Neptune itself are best on clear evenings in autumn. Mysterious Events on Neptune In 1989, Voyager 2 reached Neptune for the first time and brought experts important new insight into this gigantic celestial object. At that time, NASA's unmanned space probe had already been on its historic mission through the endless expanses of our galaxy for over 10 years. Voyager 2 succeeded in taking images of Neptune for the first time, while simultaneously detecting six previously unknown moons in the direct vicinity of the planet. Viewing the storms that whipped across the surface of Neptune caused great astonishment among experts. The strong winds thrashed across the ice giant with a rapid speed of more than 2,400 kilometers per hour. None of the leading astronomers could explain how these winds, which were also the strongest storms ever measured, were even possible on the surface of the giant planet. But the violent storms were not the only phenomenon on Neptune that posed a great mystery to scientists. The information collected by Voyager 2 led to the conclusion that the surface of Neptune, with an average temperature between negative 218 degrees Celsius and negative 201 degrees Celsius, is approximately as high as that of Uranus, despite the fact that Neptune is much further away from the Sun than Uranus. Astronomers were completely baffled by these new facts about the ice giant. It was time to search for explanations. How can the surface temperature of Neptune be explained? But before we dedicate ourselves to the explanation provided by scientists, let us briefly return to the nature of Neptune mentioned at the beginning. Due to the fact that the mass of the planet is mainly composed of volatile chemical compounds, the approach to temperature measurement differs significantly from the measurements that are carried out, for example, on solid celestial bodies. The problem that this poses for scientists is that, due to their technical abilities, they can only measure the temperatures of the outermost gas layers of Neptune. According to experts, it appears that Neptune emits twice as much heat as it receives from the Sun. However, in this regard, the giant planet is not alone in our planetary system. Similar phenomena has been observed on both Jupiter and Saturn. What is more unusual is that Uranus, which is also an ice giant, emits much less heat than its counterparts. In simpler terms, one could say that Neptune manages to warm from within 
despite the comparatively lower solar radiation, whereas such a phenomenon cannot be observed in the case of Uranus. The Inner Heat Source of Neptune The origin of this inner heat source of Neptune is, according to experts, to be found in the formation of our planetary system. In general terms, this is the residual heat that was emitted during the birth of our solar system and is still present today. Due to the prevailing gravitational contraction, an effect occurs in which the internal energy of a planet is converted into heat, while the surface of the celestial body slowly contracts due to the gravitational forces acting on it. The heat generated inside is then released on the surface of the corresponding celestial body. While the question of the temperature composition on the surface of Neptune has been deciphered by experts over the years, it is still unclear why Uranus, unlike Neptune, does not have such an internal heating system. The researchers agree that such a transformation process once took place on Uranus as well. However, an unknown event must have ensured that the phenomenon was stopped on this planet. Why does Uranus lack internal heating? A possible explanation for this would be, for example, a collision with another celestial body, which could have caused Uranus to be thrown out of its ancestral orbit. Another answer to the question of why Uranus does not have an integrated heat source is the theory that the heat generated inside a planet is not emitted constantly and over a uniform period of time, but is rather released in individual waves. It is therefore possible that Uranus is currently only in a sort of resting phase and thus in a period between two heat waves. According to experts, such a heat pause could last for thousands of years. Therefore, it is currently very difficult to understand the theory of internal heat waves occurring in individual phases. Only the beginning of a new heat episode on Uranus would allow astronomers to leave the field of speculation. However, the different ages of the two planets could also shed light on the temperature issue. In fact, Uranus is much older than Neptune. In the course of a planet's lifespan, the intensity of its heat radiation changes greatly. While young planets tend to radiate a great deal of heat, the corresponding radiant power of older celestial bodies decreases more and more. In addition, the individual composition of a planet determines how quickly and how intensively heat is emitted. How the storms on Neptune arise Now that we've already given you some explanations on the temperature issue, we'd like to come back to the already mentioned heavy storms that are prevalent on Neptune. As a reminder, on Neptune, there are storms which sweep across the planet's surface at a speed of over 2,400 kilometers per hour. According to scientists, the source of the colossal winds could also be directly related to the temperature conditions on Neptune. In addition, the nature of the planet's surface accommodates the rapid speed of the storms. On the surface of Neptune, there are no mountains or comparable landscape formations that could naturally slow down the rising winds. Although astronomers assume that Neptune's internal heat source also contributes to the rapid drifts, scientific proof of this thesis is extremely difficult to obtain. This is mainly due to the major obstacles that stand in the way of the experts' observations. While Earth goes through its natural cycle in the space of a year, Neptune needs a full 165 years to complete this undertaking. This means that knowledge about the planet can only be gathered very slowly. This is therefore a scientific project that will involve several successive generations. It will surely take a long time before we humans have collected more complete information about the ice giant. In contrast to solid planets, on gas giants a large part of the energy released is converted into wind. The fact that Neptune releases twice as much energy as it takes from the Sun could therefore explain how the violent storms on the planet come about. Some astronomers suspect that the winds of Neptune originate from inside the planet and are the result of the internal heat source combined with the natural rotation of the celestial body. This would also explain why the winds of Uranus are much weaker than the storms on Neptune, at a speed of about 900 km per hour, even though both planets have a similar rate of rotation. However, whether it is really the absence of the internal heat source that makes the storms on Uranus comparatively weak still falls within the realm of conjecture. There are likely a multitude of different factors that are responsible for the individual phenomena on a given planet. The exploration of our solar system will certainly keep the world of science busy for countless generations to come. Hope you enjoyed your trip to our solar system. Are you also interested in astronomy? Which planet in our solar system fascinates you most? 
Feel free to tell us your opinion on the topic in the comments section. See you soon.